and welcome back to Home Built Help's Tip of the Week. And we're on the road again. If you're going to get your new home built aircraft ready to fly this year, you're going to have to have it inspected and certified prior to flight. Now you have two paths to getting this accomplished. One is to contact the FAA and see if you can get them out to inspect your plane and that's becoming increasingly difficult due to staff shortages, budget cuts, etc. Another option is to use a DAR and this is a person who on behalf of the FAA can perform that same function of inspection and certification. Well this week we have the unique opportunity to visit a DAR and interview them to find out exactly what it is they do and how they do it. Well, let's listen in. Uh, hello, my name is Arnold Holmes. I'm an AMP, an IA, and a DAR. And uh, John has asked me to come on and talk a little bit about what it takes to get your aircraft certified in the amateur built category, or maybe you're an ELSA, SLSA, or maybe you need a flight uh, production flight certificate if you're a manufacturer. So uh, those are all things that I can help you with, and we can walk you through the process a little bit. Uh, I'm located in Leesburg, Florida. My geographical range is Florida, the Caribbean, and Puerto Rico. However, we, uh, we do have the capability of reaching out across the country in what we call a geographical expansion. Uh, so that's a possibility if you happen to be in Georgia or Oklahoma or New York or something like that and can't get a DAR, uh, there is a way for me to come out and see you. The DAR, which stands for Designated Airworthiness Representative, uh, is a representative of the FAA. We do not work for them, they do not pay us. This is something that we uh, are privileged to do, and it's a service that we offer the community because, in many cases, your local uh, flight standards district office, the FISDO, or your local manufacturing inspection district office, your MIDO, where you get a DAR from both of those offices, uh, many times they don't have the st enough staff or they're too busy or you know they're focused on other things and it's hard for them to get out to do experimental aircraft inspections. That's where DAR comes in. Now since we're not paid by them we do charge uh, a fee for our service and every DAR is a little bit different so you would have to check with your DAR that you, ch that you start talking with and find out what his fee is because they're all going to be different. There is no set fee. We get to charge whatever we want. So Again, it could be uh, $500, it could be $1,500. It, de it depends on who's available, what's available, and maybe what you're willing to pay. <laughs> I mean, it's really what it comes down to. So um, the DAR's function is to make sure your paperwork is good and to come out and look at your airplane. And again, you're going to find, although there, are, there is a specific criteria outlined on what we really do, you're going to find that some DARs are a little more detailed than others. Some guys are going to come in and kind of look cursory, make sure your paperwork's right, and, and sign you off and send you away. Other guys are going to be very detailed. The point is, is that we're not there to rake you over the coals. We're there to make sure you meet a minimum standard that your aircraft, as an experimental aircraft, is safe for operation. So if you look up the, de the, uh, if you look up the definition of the word airworthy, when we're applying it to a type certified airplane, it has two conditions. One, it must meet type design and two, it must be safe for operation. With an experimental aircraft, since we don't have type certificates, for, type certificates for experimental aircraft, it needs to at least be safe for operation. So at our discretion and based on our experience and using standard practices, we should come in and look your airplane over, flashlight, mirror, that kind of thing. You should have the airplane completely opened up and meaning cowlings off, inspection panels open, but otherwise airplane ready for flight. We do not want to show up until that airplane is done. And when I mean done, I mean done. So when we show up, we want the cowlings off, the spinner off, we want uh, inspection panels open uh, so that we can inspect push rods and bell cranks and things like that. If you're a retractable gear airplane, we're gonna ask you to do a, a, a gear retraction test. We're gonna ask you to run the engine. We wanna see the engine run. Does it start properly? Does it idle? Does it run properly? Does the prop cycle, if you have a constant speed propeller, uh, mag check, those kind of things. Do we need you to run it at full power for 15 minutes to prove anything? No. What we need to do is look and see that it operates correctly and that it's safe. That's all we're looking for. So when I come to inspect your airplane, um, we're going to look the airframe over. We're going to do uh, generally 
what a conditional inspection might be. We may not go super deep, but we're there to ascertain the basic airworthiness and, and uh, capability of being safe to operate. Some of the other things that are very important for you is that in accordance with Part 45, your aircraft is marked correctly, meaning the end numbers are the right size, they're contrasting, things like that. You can find all that in Part 45, that you have an identification plate attached to your aircraft in the appropriate place with at least make, model, and serial number. That information is the same information from 8050-3 and must match exactly. So we're going to be looking for an experimental sticker if it's a two-place airplane. We're going to be looking for that experimental sticker to warn a passenger of the experimental nature of the aircraft, at least two inches high and plain visibility. We're going to be looking for a passenger warning placard clearly visible to the passenger. Now, again, two-place airplane or better. So these are some of the very important things, and, and they tend to be some of the simple things that people forget to do. They forget the experimental, they forget the placard, they forget the passenger warning, and so you don't want to forget those things because those are the easy things. Um, one of the things that will help you get through the, this entire process much easier is to get a, uh, a copy from the FAA website, it's free, it's PDF, of advisory, advisory Circular 2027, the current revision is G. It will walk you through every step of this process. You can read it, you'll know what to expect, you'll know what to look for. Advisory Circular 2027 G is the Bible for you to figure out how this is gonna go. So once you've looked at all that, you've read it, you've gotten your paperwork together, you contact your DAR, you set up a, you start a, a rapport with him, find out him or her, find out what they're gonna charge you, uh, whether or not you need to leave your area to help them, because there's an additional process. If we have to do a geographical expansion, there's an addi additional process for us to go through before we can actually do that. So um, you don't wanna wait till the week before you need it, but you really don't need to contact us much more than a few months prior to needing it. But um, as far as being a DAR, that's kind of what we're looking for. You know, we, we're, we're there to help you with the paperwork, but we expect you to do the best you can on your own first. We're going to meet up with you and inspect it to ascertain that it uh, is safe for operation. If there's some corrections that need to be made, we can work with you on that a little bit. And uh, that's about it. Yeah. Now that we've come to look at your airplane and let's, let's think about, we, you know, we've got some things that we don't like. We've got some discrepancies, some issues that we don't feel are going to allow you to pass inspection and, and receive your certificate. There's a couple scenarios that can play out there. The first scenario is that those discrepancies are relatively easy to fix. Maybe it's a jam nut on a push rod that's not set or something to that degree. If that's something you can fix on the spot, we're going to point it out and we're going to say, hey, you know, we've, we've got this little issue. If you can fix those little issues on the spot, for me, I'm going to continue to work with you that day and we're going to get you through the inspection. There may be issues that come up that take a little bit more time. Maybe you've missed something and you need a part and you have to order that part. I can back away and say, hey, you know what, get that part and I can come back in a couple days and we'll finish this off then. So that, that does occur as well. Um, there is in very extreme ca uh, cases, there are things that occur where you will be denied officially. And some of the things that'll make you be denied officially is if you fraudulently attempt to get an airworthiness certificate and it's obvious that it's fraud, you're gonna get a denial letter. And if you get a denial letter, you'll never get an airworthiness certificate again. You can't shop for a DAR if you get a denial letter because the denial letter is sent out to all the DARs. So if you are trying to be fraudulent, you're trying to pull the wool over our eyes, you're lying on your application and we figure it out, things like that, you're gonna get a denial letter and you're out of business. So once we've completed our inspection, as uh, your, your airplane has the cowlings off, your airplane has the inspection panels open, that kind of thing, we expect when we show up that your aircraft is ready for flight with the exception of the panels being open. So if you've done your, your homework, you've worked with your DAR, everything's in place, we come out, we do the inspection, I'm gonna hand you that certificate, you can put your cowlings on, you can put your inspection panels back on, do a great pre-flight, and you're ready to go flying that same day, if, if there's enough time. So if you're going to do an amateur built airplane in the experimental category, um, the first thing you want to do is get your aircraft registered. The very first document you need is an aircraft registration. 
That's going to be an FAA Form 8050-1, which is the application. You will receive, when that's complete, an 8050-3, which will be your white card. It looks sort of like a postcard, and that's one of the documents you'll always keep in your aircraft. Whenever you're operating it, you'll have to have that registration certificate in your aircraft. So before you're, you really want to research that and how to do that, and I'll get to that in a moment, uh, before you call me. Now, you can call me or any other DAR ahead of time, but there's not much we can really do to help you get the process going until you've got that aircraft registered. So that's really the first big thing you want to do. But you can go to the FAA Forms website, and you can type in, there's a little search box there, you can type in 8050-1, and it'll pop up with a selection for that, or 8130-6 or 8130-12. But these are the documents in the very beginning that you're going to need to have filled out when you start talking with your DAR. One thing that I cannot stress uh, more importantly is that whatever information appears on your registration, that's the 8050-3, for instance, your name, your address, the aircraft model number, serial number, etc. However those things are written on the registration, they have to be written exactly the same way on every other document that they appear, including the placard, your, air, your airframe placard, um, your ID plate, meaning, uh, so make sure that if you've got last name first, first name last, that's how it's going to appear on everything else that you fill out. Very, very important. If you'd like help with certifying your aircraft, you can contact me. My name is Arnold Holmes. You can find me via email at arnold at dar-certification.com or you can reach me on my phone at 352-617-2029 and I'll be happy to communicate with you between 8 and 5 Monday through Friday here at Florida Time and really look forward to meeting you and helping you with your certification. Now if you're not quite ready for that final inspection of your aircraft, then clearly Back to building.